All right, well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here, Jenna Tree Solar. I do apologize for the lighting as well as the sound. Uh, I am in the furnace room, which is lit only by this one bulb here, and I have no more extension cords. I can bring in some other lighting. Anyways, this video is about this um, Wi-Fi temperature monitor for the stove pipe. That I did a video on this. Uh, I did an unboxing and uh, I was uh, kind of looking at it and I get a lot of questions about how it's doing so far uh, as far as this goes uh, so I can kind of tell you what's going on with it and uh, you know pros and cons for one let me tell you for one okay so this meter this works great the battery seems to last a while and it does have good Wi-Fi connection, I noticed that. Um, so that's good. Uh, it does have this very nice uh, cable here which is heat resistant. You could literally lay it right on top of your stove and uh, obviously nobody's gonna say anything before anybody starts jumping through their screens. This is here temporarily to hold this in place. Uh, because if you watched any of my previous videos, you know we've been having problems with uh, smoke coming in. So I've kind of moved it around and I don't want to tie it all down if it's not going to work. Anyway, the point is, is that this is temporary. So don't freak out that I'm just leaving stuff all over the place. I'm not. I'm right now in a testing phase. So anyway, uh, that's the end of the probe uh, right there. Now, if you're looking at the probe right now, I can tell you one big disadvantage and maybe you can see this I'm not sure if you can let's see if I can zoom in even further I know it's not focused but maybe you can see that see the gap so this this is a magnetic uh, probe end which is great and it can handle the temperatures also great the problem is is it does not make full contact with the stove pipe itself and I have one of these over here that I use uh, these don't seem to be as accurate. It reads it always reads a little bit lower than what the temperature is And I also think it's because it's got a big gap there. So it's kind of a, a good guide, but not something you would take as uh, gospel um, But uh, the same could be said with this probe end. if the probe end itself was a little bit curved for let's say a four six or eight inch stovepipe I think it would read the temperatures much more accurate I've had my laser thermometer on this, and typically this will read between 20 and 40 degrees lower than what the actual stove pipe temperature is. So I kind of figure when I'm looking at it to go ahead and add 40 degrees, and that's what my actual temperatures are. Uh, so if there was a way that they could somehow modify this probe end so that it has a little bit of a curve to it so that it could actually fully grip the uh, stove pipe then I think it would make the temperature reading much more accurate uh, because we do have a draft that comes through here and it does cool down everything around here I mean I quite literally have a draft that's running right over this so it's obviously cooling this just a tad because it's not making perfect uh perfect you know not perfectly touching that stove pipe so that is that is another disadvantage but again if you have it in the right spot and you're able to actually calibrate it using a laser thermometer so that you can verify its temperatures then you can generally tell okay it, you know if it's reading 300 it's probably 340 or whatever i mean that's that's basically what i do and that seems to work out pretty good. It's still a nice way to monitor your temperatures. I still have alerts set up. Now let's talk about the the whole Wi-Fi thing. So you can see the temperature's coming down a little bit. I gotta add a little bit more wood here. I'm just getting this fire started. And I don't like to pile it in with a whole bunch if there's gonna be a problem, especially when I'm testing out my, um, uh, my stove pipe right now. I don't wanna fill it all the way up and then have a problem. Uh, but anyways, enough about that. So the, the Wi-Fi stuff works great. It was very easy to set up. You do need an account with the company in order to actually get this to work. That's fine. However, another disadvantage. 
and this is something they don't tell you in the manual, it is actually a monthly subscription fee to have this service at all. So if you are interested in this, you will be paying each and every month, I think it's, I don't know, four or $5 a month, something like that. Um, if, uh, you know, if you don't mind putting four or $5 down a month for the service, then it's great. It's very, very reliable. Uh, it, it really does do a great job of monitoring. And I've got it set up so that it updates every one minute. So every one minute, it'll send the information to the cloud, and then I'll be able to see it on the app on my phone. I think they have an Android and iOS app, uh, but I can monitor the temperatures basically anywhere in the world. That's great. That's perfect. And if you thinking to yourself, well, there's plenty of remote temperature monitors out there, nothing that can withstand the temperatures of a stovepipe. So that's what this whole system is specifically designed for. Uh, now, the other disadvantage, and this is a very big disappointment again the push notifications don't exist all right if you have an alert set up let's say for 200 or 500 degrees and it meets that threshold it simply sends you an email so if you don't have email set up at certain times like for example for me uh i don't have uh, i have do not disturb set on my phone at night so i can sleep that way i'm not interrupted and the only thing that would interrupt me is a phone call. So if there is an actual emergency from one of the kids or my parents or whatever, uh, it'll still push through and then I can answer it. Uh, and I have it set up on my phone so that only certain people would be able to interrupt. But anyways, uh, my email does not alert me at night when I'm sleeping. So if I get an email in the middle of the night saying this thing is over 500 degrees or it's about to go out, I'm not gonna know about it. Because there is no actual push notification with this setup. Now then, <laughs> to go even further down the rabbit hole, you could technically, which I did do, uh, set up SMS messaging. And I've got it set up in my app. Um, I actually use Signal for my messenger. Uh, I've got it set up so that even during Do Not Disturb, it's going to alert me of an issue. Again, another disadvantage, you have to pay for the SMS credits. So great in a bind, great if you have a lot of money and don't care. Uh, I ended up purchasing 100 SMS credits and I've only used a couple because I am much, much better about monitoring this to the point where I'm not gonna let it get either too cold or too hot. But it's still a nice insurance policy to have if I make a mistake or I don't fill it up enough, it's extra cold outside, whatever it will send me an alert while I'm sleeping to go downstairs here where I'm at and fill the furnace back up. So lots of disadvantages, unfortunately. And I don't think too many people are going to actually um, use this for that setup. And this is, it's a real disappointment, to be honest. If you don't mind shelling out the money, the five or $6 a month and then the $10 you know, depending on how many SMS messages you use, but I'm probably not gonna use more than 20 or 30 every season. Uh, if you don't mind shelling out just a little bit more money, sure, this is nice, but I think the monthly subscription, I understand why they have to do it, but it's not advertised forefront that it's gonna cost you money in order to monitor the system. Obviously, nothing is free. They have to support this in the cloud. They have data that they have to pay for, et cetera. I get it, I understand. But that might turn some people off because I have a really nice uh, anemometer upstairs uh, that monitors all sorts of things and actually connects to the internet and sends that information to my phone and I don't pay a dime for it. So with this being uh, a two hundred dollar package in total on top of your monthly subscription fee that might turn off a lot of people it does work great i do i am going to be paying for it because i'm new to burning wood so i'm nervous about burning wood and i don't want to until i'm really really comfortable with burning wood and i know that it's going to be safe uh, I'm going to keep paying for this service because I need to be able to monitor the system. That's for my own peace of mind. 
we have a very, very tall chimney. It's in the basement. It's in the house. It's not like something that would catch on fire outside and stay outside. This is something that could burn the entire house down. So for me, I am definitely going to keep paying for the service. But if you are looking at getting one of these systems, uh, consider that, yes, you can monitor your system for a monthly fee. Yes, you can get basically push notifications through SMS, again, through a fee per message. So that is something to be aware of if you are looking at this system uh, in total. So is it worth it? That's completely up to you. To me right now, it's worth it. It's worth it because I am unfamiliar or inexperienced with burning wood. And therefore, I want to take extra safety precautions. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, $30 a year for the insurance of not burning down my house is well worth the price. But for those of you who are experienced wood burners who don't have any problems or aren't nervous about burning wood or anything else like that, this might not be worth it. And on top of that, you do need an internet connection. And for those of you who are way out in the country who may not have internet or cell or anything else like that to go on, it might be that this is not even gonna work for you at all. Uh, it does require that you have an internet connection. You cannot just set it up locally where it will just locally transmit that information to you. So hopefully this video has helped you kind of get a good idea of what you're paying for, what the continual costs are of actually having one of these things. And uh, hopefully that helps you make a better decision on uh, you know whether or not you should actually purchase it for me it's worth it but it's likely that in a year or two when I'm really comfortable with burning wood uh, I'm probably going to stop using the service um, probably the SMS at the very least and I may even stop the monthly subscription fee I'm not really sure uh, at this point but until I get comfortable I'm gonna keep using the service and yes it is a disadvantage um, but hey, if you can comment down below if you know of an alternative that uh, has this setup where you can actually stick a probe straight to your stovepipe, uh, I would love to hear it. And if it's free or lower cost, I would definitely love to hear it. There might be alternatives out there. I'm not really sure. So anyways, uh, there, there you have it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this video really helps you. Um, I consider this to be a very important part of my uh, wood burning. Uh, so for me, it's worth it, but it may not be worth it to you. Or you may not even be able to use it at all. So anyways, uh, I do appreciate your support, of course. And uh, you know, head over to GenitreeSolar.com if you're interested in a DC to AC inverter. And we do appreciate all of your support as always and take care.